Thanks to everyone tuning in. It's great to have this chance to showcase some of the work the Illinois State Geological Survey has been involved with along Illinois Beach State Park. Uh, with this talk, I hope to capture insights from over four years of single beam sonar data acquisition um, as part of several ongoing monitoring programs. Um, I'll go ahead and acknowledge my co-authors who all participated in this effort over the years. Uh, this work has been funded by the IDNR Coastal Management Program. I'll also go ahead and point out that our group also maps the exposed beach environments um, using drones. And our ultimate goal is to couple onshore and offshore geomorphic models and use hydrodynamic data from nearby buoys, weather stations, and instrument cage deployments, and, and water level gauges to address the cause and effect relationships within a very dynamic coastal environment. Illinois Beach State Park is located in northernmost Lake County, Illinois, just beneath the state line with Wisconsin. Uh, the park occupies much of the Zion Beach Ridge Plain, uh, which extends the nearly 25 kilometers from Kenosha, Wisconsin to North Chicago, Illinois. The defining characteristic of this coastal physiographic terrain is the washboard style ridge and swale topography that's shown in the inset map. Uh, this is one of the less disturbed parts of the system. A part of the Zion Beatrich Plain is internationally recognized as a wetland system of importance. Modern shoreline morphodynamics must be placed into a geological context. The figure on the left derived from a helicopter-based electromagnetic study aimed at mapping the geology of the Illinois coast. While many studies of the past had sought to sample the lake bottom and map substrate types, this data set represents an instant snapshot of littoral sand availability. We can see the Zion Beatrich Plain is associated with much sand, both onshore and as part of an offshore sand platform. The rest of the coast has little to go around, on the other hand. Were it not for this sand at Illinois Beach, we would be looking at a bluff shoreline, as is encountered from Lake Bluff to Evanston today. The topographic profile to the right shows the Illinois Beach ridge and swale terrain, from Lake Margin Bluff to modern shoreline, now up to two kilometers lakeward. Situated along the southwestern lake margin, the net littoral transport direction is southward. Much of the annual transport is linked to cold weather storms that are able to utilize much of the around 400 kilometers of lake fetch to the north-northeast. Age dating is correspondingly derived a younging trend of the ridge plain towards the south and from bluff to shoreline. C14 dating suggests that sands associated with this lithosome first arrived in Illinois from a source region further up the coast around 3,000 years ago. Several new beach ridges have formed in the southern part of the system since the late 1800s, sourced in part by upstream shoreline erosion. Some of the associated dynamics are tightly coupled to decadal lake level conditions. Above, we can see the historic water level curve for Lake Michigan, characterized by a decadal oscillation at the meter scale. While our group is interested in the longer term history of the Zion Beach Ridge Plain and Illinois Beach State Park, our main concern right now is understanding short-lived morphodynamics, particularly those related to the ups and downs of lake level, coupled with the impacts of high energy storm events, of course. We can see here two Google Earth images of a stretch of shoreline from the park's north unit, which has for decades experienced problems with shoreline erosion. The 2013 photo shows a park road separated from the shoreline by over 100 meters. The transition from historical low in lake level to near historic high by 2020 had blown out a sizable section of this road. Other features to point out here are the overwash fans seen extending into the wetland swales between the beach ridges. This slide shows the full extent of infrastructure loss along this portion of the coast, highlighting the relevance of high resolution monitoring studies, both in terms of spatial and temporal scales. Our data record, which goes back to 2018, will help with evaluating the effectiveness of coastal erosion mitigation strategies, including some that I will speak on shortly. Shown in the topobathymetric map on the left are 1939 shoreline position. Housing foundations are also superimposed in uh, as little blue squares. Many of these are now on the lake bottom. Uh, folks lived out here before this became park terrain. Um, the area, by the way, is the one we just looked at in aerial photography. Since 2013 alone, we have lost around 40 acres of terrain along this section of Illinois Beach. 
As we can see from the historical photos from the 1970s period of high decadal lake level, uh, this has been an ongoing concern. Uh, the four parallel structures in the southern part of the map uh, is where the Army Corps put in parallel submerged breakwaters as, as part of a GLRI Health Report Futures project. Uh, this was back in 2020. It wound up only being three ridges, but we now have four years of pre-construction data telling us about nearshore shoreline morphodynamics. Our group will continue to monitor this stretch of coast now that the structures are in place. Here's a look at when construction was underway. Uh, the building blocks of the rubble ridges are small enough by design to allow ice and the largest storms to dislocate them. Ideally, they would evolve unlike massive emergent breakwaters and help buffer the shoreline and wetlands from the brunt of wave attack while changing over time. And we've already noticed that the sandbar between rubble ridges and shoreline has accreted since their construction. Present water depths above the structures are generally around a meter or more and of course, how they interact with waves and currents will also depend on base lake level conditions. So we are looking forward to continued bathymetric monitoring here for several years. I should also mention that a much larger state project will be underway starting next year to emplace emerge in breakwaters along much of Illinois Beach State Park. Um, here's another site we have monitored for the last four years, giving us a, a very good pre-construction baseline for assessing the effectiveness of these structures. This is just beneath North Point Marina and the northernmost portion of the park. And we get a sense from the approximate 1939 shoreline position of how much erosion has occurred here and how shoreline hardening to the north has maybe influenced it. We see here also a schematic of the design for the four breakwaters for this particular embayment. And, and this is one embayment of several along Illinois Beach. And you can see those um, sort of off in the distance in this uh, drone photo. Lastly, so we understand that shoreline monitoring isn't all doom and gloom. Um, there's a southern part of the Zion Beach Ridge Plain. It's not part of Illinois Beach anymore. We're in Waukegan at this point, but it's the area that is receiving sand from the littoral upstream. Let me start this time-lapse video. So historically, a lot of sand trapping has occurred here at the Waukegan Harbor Jetty. This is a time lapse of Google Earth images that are showing this very complicated dynamic. Um, coastal monitoring here can tell us about overwash events, the, the process of beach ridge formation, all these other things that have ecologic implications. And of course, mapping the whole system from the erosional northern component to the depositional southern component is what ultimately will provide us with insights into how everything connects from a sedimentary perspective. One final argument for the importance of short-lived coastal geomorphic monitoring. The Army Corps and NOAA put out phenomenal LIDAR-derived geospatial data sets that are extremely useful in addressing coastal change. Um, the only downside to these is that these sorts of data sets for example, the Jabaltex um, program's outputs are only acquired at this scale every six years on average. That's great for decadal assessments and, and volumetrics, but it fails to capture shorter lived events of importance, you know, very strong storms or seasonal dynamics associated with ice cover. Um, there are many ecological implications uh, for understanding the short term uh, shorebirds, for example, might gra gravitate towards certain types of uh, strand materials or, or terrains, you know, overwash fans, for example. Uh, the piping plover, by the way, has a lifespan that is less than the frequency of full coastal LIDAR coverage. So um, that's where uh, we come in uh, to study the shorter lived morphodynamics and kind of fill in some of the gaps uh, between the much more extensive uh, surveys done by the Army Corps. Uh, before we get into the bathymetric data, which is the main part of the talk, a, a quick slide on the subaerial monitoring our group does. We fly drones at four sites on a monthly basis and biannually uh, elsewhere along Illinois Beach State Park. We do this year round. 
Uh, we render DEMs from these surveys using structure from motion photogrammetry. Um, see the DEMs in the uh, middle part of the slide uh, showing sites two and three and sites four to six in summer of 2021 as a uh, digital elevation model. Uh, we can nicely see here the truncation of now shore oblique ridge terrains at sites two to three and the transition to more conformable landform succession south of uh, site four. Now, bathymetric monitoring locations are paired with the drone sites. The map to the left um, shows the survey footprints from both. In burgundy red, the aerial drone survey areas. In green, in the panel B, uh, those are the nearshore um, or innermost nearshore survey footprints that we uh, tackle with the with the uh, remotely controlled pontoon vessel you see in the images on the right, and then the larger footprint, which is shown in or outlined in in blue, that's done with a crewed vessel. So most of our mapping occurs in the white ribbon. Uh, a region often characterized by little to no data coverage given the shallowness and frequency of morphodynamic change that occurs there. And while drone data capture beach topography, which is ever changing, the wading surveys, remotely controlled and crewed vessel single beam sonar surveys, they cover the near shore realm and give us an idea of the changes that are happening to the submerged part of the beach system. So we cover all bathymetric monitoring sites twice a year. Uh, bracketing the cold water season. So those surveys usually fall within November um, on the pre-ice uh, side and then March, April on the, uh, the, the post-ice side. And then we have the larger offshore grid, which is shown in blue, uh, which is a summertime survey that usually takes three days or so to execute by a crewed vessel. Now we'll see more detail on all of this in the coming slides. Before we do so, I should mention that all our bathymetric data is available through the Illinois State Geological Survey Data Clearinghouse. And that also contains all of our drone information. What we're looking at here are screenshots from the interface showing what it looks like for the single beam bathymetry data. Um, so the, a, you know, a list of all the different files that are available for download, um, either by site, or by uh, or, or all together. Um, I think it's it's slightly differently set up for the uh, the, the drone data, but um, everything we generate here at Illinois Beach uh, makes its way up here eventually, and this data set will be growing and growing in the coming years. Here's actually a very quick sneak peek at uh, the uh, the drone data for download, so that can be done uh, on a site. Uh, by site basis per calendar year. And so again, sites one through four are, we, we, we try to hit monthly. Um, the other sites are, are twice a year or so. The rapid deployment and ease of processing of single beam data has made that our bread and butter. And we can see our setup in the left image inset. The remotely controlled dual pontoon vessel is equipped with an RTK GPS unit for on the fly centimeter precision in positioning, and that's integrated with a dual frequency sonar unit. The left image shows a track line map from a one-off survey of recently emplaced submerged rubble ridges at the Illinois Beach Healthy Port Future site. The center image shows an interpolation of those data, clearly resolving nearshore sandbar and the three ridges. The image to the far right was acquired by drone, and one can see the submerged breakwaters very nicely here. Um, individual blocks can even be made out. Our other surveys are a bit more organized and attempt to follow transect spacings or even distinct track lines depending on extent and mode of survey. On a coarse scale at around 500 meters spacing between shore perpendicular lines, we survey the full length of Illinois Beach State Park to around two kilometers offshore distance. This happens every summer and is done by crewed vessel. This also involves the careful following of former track lines. The course grid is supplemented with fine scale surveys at each of the beach monitoring locations at around 25 meter transect spacing with survey specific start and end points. Occasionally we engage in targeted surveys that are of a larger extent than our general beach site surveys and thus require a slightly larger grid spacing. This medium scale grid survey was utilized for a sand nourishment study a few years back for example. 
which a colleague presented on in a prior Lakebed 2030 meeting. The way we utilize the data differs by bathymetric survey type or grid spacing. The Illinois Beach State Park wide large grid size data are evaluated on a shore perpendicular transect basis, as this is where we are most confident in the interpolation models. One such model can be seen in the left image with the data distribution superimposed. We can see one of the extraction transects in the upper right hand image labeled T20, along with color coded data distributions of several annual surveys. Below, we have a comparison of extracted bathymetric profiles at T20 of data we collected in 2018, 2020, and 2021 with 2008 and 2012 Army Corps data superimposed. We have 22 such profile extraction locations, providing a regional picture of major geomorphic developments. We have also extracted older data along these lines, such as the 2008 and 2012 Jabaltex LIDAR um, DEMs. In the right, we have a comparison of net erosional north unit versus stable south unit profiles, showing developments associated with the most recent decadal low to high lake level transition. In the northern transect, T4, we can see the coastal retreat in profile orientation. In the southernmost, T22, we can see the migration and accretion patterns of the nearshore bar. The utility of reoccupying this grid on an annual basis is thus to offer this regional picture of change and how it interconnects, bridging the time gap left by LIDAR-derived data sets. To capture seasonal morphodynamics, we shift to the shoreline proximal part of the nearshore, where water depths are five meters or less. This is where we perform targeted surveys alongside beach areas we monitor topographically. Shown here is an example from our Illinois Beach Site 1 location, which is just south of North Point Marina. This area has experienced the highest rates of erosion over the past decade, which accelerated during the rise in high standing lake level. The middle image shows in different colors the track line coverage responsible for generating the models in the right, which I will now show as a time lapse image. Understanding this portion of the shore face profile development is tightly coupled to shoreline and beach morphodynamics. Of course, to get the full picture um, of change, the offshore model must be integrated with the onshore portion. Here we can see pairings of onshore and offshore monitoring data, or, or DEMs, from March of 2020 and January of 2021 with associated net change model to the right in which red colors indicate erosion and blue colors accretion. I should mention that on the terrestrial portion there are some vegetation effects um, and some, some groundwater effects uh, in the swales for example, um, but otherwise the uh, unvegetated beach surface and, and monitoring that with drones shows us very, very well where sand is uh, being lost and where it's being gained. The inner near shore also experienced a net loss of sand during this time, I should say, and, and we're just now beginning to prepare our sizable data set for a thorough analysis of change over time at multiple sites, hoping to address littoral sand volumetrics and the nature of hydrodynamic forcing. The process component of this is a bit trickier than mapping beach topography and nearshore bathymetry. And to help with our understanding of what sort of events are responsible for geomorphic change, we have installed and maintained two buoys that are relatively close to shore. Um, this means they provide uh, more relevant data than those that are far out in the lake. Uh, one is situated uh, on the northern end of Illinois Beach. Uh, State Park and another one is situated off of Waukegan. So we have both both ends of the coastal system covered. We also maintain a weather station atop the park office um, that's situated right in the middle of those two buoys. Um, and we're also installing a nearshore buoy here and, and have a wave imaging station that will use a computer algorithm to derive wave dynamic information from imagery, um, you know, basically capturing buoy movements back calculating wave dynamics from that. Uh, we deploy trail cameras to capture images of lake conditions. 
Um, we've also recently installed four hydrodynamic instrument cages uh, surrounding the submerged rubble ridges at the GLRI Healthy Port Future site, um, which is our monitoring site three on the map. Now these cages contain pressure transducers, turbidity and current meters, and we also have plans to uh, leave some of these deployed over the winter season to hopefully help with revealing what happens during these large uh, cold water uh, gale events. Uh, this uh, past season was the first that we've uh, deployed instrument cages, so there are, aren't too many things I can show, but I tossed together a slide here with some, uh, some cage-related images. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find one in the cage on the lake bottom, but we have the design blueprints here, um, a, a photo of two fully equipped cages sitting on our dock pre-deployment, um, some data outputs, and some other photos that our uh, biology friends who are doing some ecologic monitoring alongside us have, have taken of the ridge, uh, of the uh, submerged ridges over time. And I should mention that there is there is an ecological monitoring component to, uh, to, to our work here, uh, particularly as it relates to uh, the, the, um, the, the structures that we've been emplacing and will continue to emplace here. I hope this presentation gave folks an idea of what the Illinois State Geological Survey's coastal group is up to and what we're doing around Illinois Beach State Park and, and what the role of the different bathymetric grid sizes is and, and how we are, are beginning to study coastal change. Um, the around 25 meter transect spacing is what we use for shoreline proximal mapping alongside areas we monitor for beach topographic change. This is where we can get a, a full picture of the beach system, both the exposed part and the submerged part, um, along a very dynamic coastal system at a very high temporal frequency. And so hopefully that'll tell us about seasonal dynamics. Um, if we can get out pre and post storm at a site or two, that can tell us about storm dynamics, but then certainly uh, from year to year, we get a very good picture of the, the general trajectory of shoreline change and, and, and how that is coupled to what's happening to the proximal near shore and, and, and so on and so forth. The 500 meter spacing um, places these changes into a regional context and helps us bridge the gap between coastal LIDAR data sets that are provided by the Army Corps. So with four years of data collected, we, we have we can now start to piece together the system morphodynamics pre-construction of the submerged breakwater ridges, for example. And we also have uh, a series of emergent breakwaters that are uh, that will be built next year impacting the system. So uh, this continued monitoring for the next five years or so, hopefully way beyond that, um, the funding God's willing will help us address the impacts of these structures on coastal sedimentary dynamics. Thank you. Uh, please reach out with any questions. I will mention that our spot on the data clearinghouse is undergoing some renovation right now, um, but please check that out if you're interested in any of the, uh, the data I've, uh, I've mentioned here today. Thank you.